let's do something I haven't done in a while. Video game news, which is what I prefer to do. I've had too much Twitch garbage going on. <laughs> You must excuse me. I've grown quite weary. On Tuesday, Rockstar Games, whose parent company is Take Two, which is run by Strauss Zelnick, basically a Bond villain. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Have you ever noticed that all the CEOs for video game companies look like these soulless entities? that have absolutely no morals or scruples. They only care about acquiring currency. Everything else can go straight to hell. That's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with men who look like they have no souls when you stare into their eyes. When you die and go to hell, you find Strauss Zelnick sitting next to the devil and writing your name on a checklist. And we got him. You didn't buy our microtransactions in life, you little shit. So, Grand Theft Auto's new casino dropped. I ignored it because basically Grand Theft Auto Online is nothing but a huge money pit. GTA, Rockstar, Take-Two, whatever, they have realized that ever since Grand Theft Auto Online has come out, hasn't it been on since like 2013, that this thing generates crazy revenue. Because apparently, people who aren't living awesome lives are willing to spend a lot of money to seem like they're wealthy in a virtual world. This is a nightmare of which James Orwell could have never fathomed because it was too far out of reach for him. The funny thing is, there's all this crap going on, especially in the EU, with loot boxes and gambling and games, yada, yada, yada. You know, they're like Tinder eggs. Everyone goes to Target looking for surprise toys. So what we look at as, as surprise mechanics um, but I think it's important to look at this. So uh, if, if you go to, if you go to a, uh, I don't know what your version of Target is, but a, a store that sells a lot of toys, and you do a search for surprise toys, what you'll find is that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. And so it's, it's something that's been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA, of course, is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun. Come is anything to go by. B U double L S H I T, new word. A R T I S T, spells bullshit artist. I say again, bullshit artist. But I read the legal BS, where it's like, if you do satire, you can't use videos. And it's like, I'm not even playing. Knowing my luck, they'd ignore Jim Sterling and arrest me. Extradite him to the UK. It seems you thought you were funny taking our video and using it for comedy. Well, I don't find you very funny. You're no Ricky Gervais. The beauty of Grand Theft Auto's Diamond Casino is this. You can actually spend real money to buy chips in the game. I have sat in silence for a good five minutes because I don't know how to preface this to make it funny. Literally, Take-Two Interactive and Rockstar said, oh, you don't like gambling in games? Well then, here's gambling in games to the max. Fuck you, we're Take-Two. Even the BBC News weighed in on this. The GTA Online players can buy in-game dollars with real currency and then convert their virtual dollars into gambling chips. The game is rated 18 and over but remains popular with young teens. The in-game currency can be used to acquire cars, weapons, cosmetic items, and used to play slot machines, roulettes, and poker. You know the weird thing about this is? There are actually people who are putting money into this. Why not just go and gamble for real? Call me crazy, but if I'm going to gamble, I'll go to Foxwoods. <laughs> the Mohegan Sun, go down there and actually gamble my real money for a chance to win real money. And then after I'm done losing, I can take my chips and cash them in for real money. Oh my God. This is worse than real gambling because you can't even cash in your chips. 
You can only keep it in the virtual bullshit currency. Where's the appeal? I mean, sure, dressing up like Kanye West wearing a fox head was funny to me for five minutes when Grand Theft Auto first came to PC, but the, the novelty wore off quick. Running around driving in expensive cars and then one day you realize you're not wealthy. You're not Yeezy. It even goes on to say popular British streamer Broadly1322 who showcased new content on his Twitch channel said they've done it. I can't believe they've done it. After finding that in-game dollars can be exchanged for direct chips. They've gone over the line of what they would. And it's a big problem. They allow you to buy chips with real money. Frankly, he added later as his viewers debated the system. I gotta say, it's impressive. This is a perfect amalgamation, let's say, of how far corporate America can go. The video gaming industry is like, oh, we're under fire for gambling. All right, let's put real casinos in the games and see what they think. It's a big fuck you, frankly. It is. They're just looking at you and they're flipping you the bird and they don't give a rat's ass. And it's fantastic. By the way, to buy everything in the game, it will cost you $800 of real money. If you were that inclined to be that crazy. I guess I should look at it with a bit more scrutiny. It's $800. And the content there is DLC, but it's not really fulfilling DLC. You know what I'm saying? It's this sort of DLC they just pump out to make some cash. It isn't like The Witcher, where the DLC is so good, you actually enjoy the story, and you remember things that happen. It's literally garbage DLC. Trinkets and baubles that you drop your coin into. You know, oh, that fur coat looks cool. I guess I'll spend my shark cards on that because I need to have this new stuff for God knows what reason. So that when the person who kills me in passive mode drops by, they get to see how large I'm living. Speaking of passive mode, Polygon doesn't focus on the fact that GTA has a casino where you can trade real money to buy in-game casino chips and not be able to convert it back to real money. They're more excited about this fantastic thing. Years later, GTA Online finally fixes a huge trolling problem. No more passive popping. That's right, guys. Kotaku focuses on the real issues at hand. Passive popping. Now, if you come out of passive to kill someone and then weasel your way back into passive, you have a two-minute cooldown. So you better do it and run like hell before the other person respawns to lay the smack down on your ass. I'm glad Kotaku was able to focus on the good things about this. I mean, eh. This is what gaming has become. I feel bad for people today, man. You grew up at the dark age of gaming. The golden age is over. We're now in the dark age, much like YouTube. The golden age of YouTube is over. Welcome to the dark age. The dark age is planting fake influencers, demonetizing channels that could make you money while monetizing channels no one's watching or have corporate sponsorship. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. If you're thinking of using YouTube to build your online presence and become rich and famous and take care of your family, I have uh, news for you. Just don't do it! This is not the place anymore. That time is over, children. Unless, like, you know, you're politically correct. I mean, for God's sakes, Hey Queen is on Netflix. I get more views in a month than Hey Queen gets in, like, three or four months. Netflix ain't beating down my door. You know what I'm saying, dude? People think I'm balling. It's like if you knew what I was making, you'd be like, you should go back to a loading dock. Hopefully a pallet will fall on me with 10,000 pounds of crap and kill me. Well, as of yesterday, literally, after years of players' complaints, passive popping is no more. Rockstar patch notes state that there's now a cooldown after passive mode, so you just can't keep terrorizing your lobby. Oh, God. Only a gaming journalist site like Polygon or Kotaku would focus on passive popping being taken care of. Not the fact that literally Grand Theft Auto Online is becoming even more of a money pit, hoping to suck cash out of its users. For God's sakes, back when like they lost a little money in 2017, the beginning of 2017, you probably don't remember, and Take-Two Interactive, started sending cease and desist to open four so it would stop people from using mods because they assume that the PC community was too busy modding their games and not buying shark cards and it was biting into their bottom line so they decided to try and kill mods. 
before they got more of a blowback than they expected. They probably sat there and said, holy shit, you mean the PC gamers aren't like console gamers? They just won't take whatever we shit on them with? Oh, fine, fine, let them have the mods. They're not going to buy the shark cards anyway. God, I can't believe GTA 5 Online is still making this much money. Jeez, that's why they didn't come out with like a real DLC. A lot of people sit there and go, oh, the in-game monetization is what leads to them putting out free DLC. No, it's because they make way more money with this BS and shitting out these empty DLCs with a couple tweaks in the code. Oh, this gun is a little bit more spread. It fires a few more bullets. It's new content. No, it's a tweak and a weapon skin for God's sakes. This car has got a little better handling. It's all the same bullshit and rigmarole. They just gave you a little extra bling and people are buying in at the droves. I'm serious. If you want to gamble and you're of age, don't bother with this. Just go to a real casino. You might actually win some money back, baby. Damn. People wonder why I'm cynical.